at Rosil on Saturday. Olympio Andrew and Angela Edwards were the winners of the marksmen for Luciano Charles pulled one back for Shamrock. Shantimel meanwhile scored a 4-2 victory over the St. Patrick's Development outfit at the fur playing field. Kian Alexis struck a double and there was striked by Michael Logie and Black Boy. Kelroy Murray and Dennis Rush scored for the St. Patrick's Development team. Defending GFA Premier League champions and Eagle Super Strikers tasted success on Sunday. Gold by national striker Redhead and Stephen Whiteman led Hard Rock to a 2 1 win over Monkridge at the Monkridge playing field. Rickards, uh, Rickardson Phillips scored for the home team. Eagle Super Strikers, on the other hand, stopped North Stars one goal to nil with the lone goal coming from the booth of Danny Franklin. The event resumes Wednesday with a double header from 4 30 in the afternoon. Hard Rock take on Shamrock at River Sally, while Eagle Super Strikers and St. Patrick's Development Art at the Fur Plain Field. Another two games are also scheduled for Thursday when Boca Juniors and Mount Ridge clash at Plains and Chantimel and North Stars collide at Chantimel. Cricket could be reintroduced to the 2013 Rhode Island Secondary School Games scheduled for St. Vincent and Grenadines in July. That's according to coordinator of sports, Conrad Francis. He says that the sponsors, Win Lotto, are keen to spice up the event with new initiatives. A meeting to this effect is scheduled for May 10th. Win Lot has written to the, to the prominent secretaries of all the islands requesting a meeting, and that meeting most likely will be on the 20th. They are not very satisfied with how the games are going. They are concerned about the dissemination of the games, the whole marketing and promotion of it. Um, they, they're also talking about bringing back cricket and so on. Um, a number of issues that they have had for, for, for some years now that they want to really discuss with um, the PSCs and the ministers, as a matter of fact. So hopefully they will be able to hammer that out. Come, its meeting should be either the Saint or the 20th, and which will be followed by the um, coordinators, various um, directors of sports of the various islands. Grenada are the defending champions, having convincingly won the event here last year. Francis says that early preparations have started for the upcoming tournament. We have started our preparation for the games. Um, we have already selected most of our teams and, and, and most of them are in training already for that games. Coordinator of Sports, Conrad Francis. Meantime, the first quarter of 2013 has been a very busy one for the Department of Sports. Several events have already been staged with coaches very much involved. I would say it's galloping. The year is going very, very fast. Um, as you know, we had various, various programs running, various competitions. You know, we finished our, our basketball competition this year. We also completed the, the, the volleyball tournament. We had United Insurance Cricket tournament and, um, and we are preparing for various things. We have the netball um, primary school program running. We also have the football, we have tennis, we have table tennis, I mean you name it, swimming. So all of our, our coaches are actively involved in coaching in the various parishes and schools. According to sports, Conrad Francis. In cricket, Barbados are the new champions of the four-day cricket tournament in the region. They produced a stunning performance to beat Trinidad Tobago by an innings and 22 runs in the, in the third day of their final match in Bridgetown Barbados. Trinidad Tobago, who were dismissed for 110 in their first innings, faltered again, second time around for 237, with Lyndall Simmons fighting a lone battle. He scored a fighting 140 in a violent attempt to keep his team in the race. Stefan Kitwaru scored 34. The victory was set up by a first by fast bowler, Miguel Cummins, who was named man of the match for his haul of nine wickets in the game. He rocked the opposition in the first innings with a capture of 5 for 38 and returned to take 4 for 75 in the second innings. Craig Bradford also was also instrumental in the victory with a century 122 as Barbados scored an impressive 369 in their first innings. Barbados also surprised the Wooden Islands who had beaten them in the preliminaries 
an innings and 110 runs to get into the final. Well, it was another fascinating day in the Indian Premier League, with the start of the show being West Indian Kiran Pollard. He did the impossible Monday to lead the Mumbai Indians to a three-wicket win over the Sunrisers Hyderabad. Chasing 179 for victory, it looked to be all over with the Mumbai Indians needing runs from the last four overs, but Pollard smashed 36 from seven balls to carry his team home as they reach 184 for three. He scored an unbeaten 66 from just 27 balls, which included two fours and eight towering sixes. Sachin Dantulkar's unbeaten 38 from 31 balls with three fours and a six was overshadowed. Kartik also played well from 23 balls with four fours. Earlier, Dawan hit 59 from 41 balls with six fours and two sixes, and Craig White, the Australian, an unbeaten 43 from 21 balls with three sixes and three fours to lead the Sunrisers Hyderabad to 178 for three. Educational officials are happy with the turnout of students to the 2000 Jump Rope Festival held last week at the Youth Centre in Grand Dance. Scores of youngsters from several primary schools participated in the event to show their physical capabilities. Physical education specialist Alan Duncan says that the activity had been mandated by CARICOM heads of government to promote healthy lifestyles among the, among the region's youth. It was agreed that we would look at the physical education program throughout the, the English-speaking CARIC. And among other things, there is this initiative to look at, well, well the, what you call chronic non-communicable diseases, uh, more or less um, cardiovascular diseases, more or less. And therefore, it was decided that something should be done immediately. And so they have instituted the jump rope program. And that is skipping in different forms, fashion, with different types of rope, etc. It is a formal part of the physical education class. And as such, um, all students should be exposed to that. Duncan says that the activity is designed to help nationals combat non-communicable diseases. What it does, of course, well, you know, it would strengthen the heart, it would help with blood flow, and it would help to keep um, the students healthy. We hope that that generation, the next generation, would not suffer as this and previous generation is suffering with um, chronic non-communicable diseases. So every year, we have all a festival, a national festival, where we bring all the schools that are supposed to participate and practice through their physical education classes to exhibit their jump rope skills or skipping skills. Duncan says that it amounts to a fun-filled and exciting exercise. Coordination, fitness, they should be much fitter than last year. Well, some would have moved on to the secondary schools, but fitness, we are looking at a fitness level. Um, we are looking at whether they have developed in the areas like things like agility, agility, um, what we call the biomotor principles. Have they instituted changes? In other words, are they better off now than they were last year? Of course, we are looking for um, aesthetics, the beauty, enjoyment. Are they enjoying themselves? Or is it just um, robust skipping? And of course, excitement, exuberance. Those are some of the things we are looking for. That's uh, physical education specialist there, Alan Duncan. That's sports. I'm Trevor Thwaites. As a farmer, I play my part in practicing sustainable land management. I do not allow my animal to graze in any one spot long time. I manage my use of fertilizer and pesticides very carefully. And when I plant on the hillside, I practice contour farming. I am trying to stop land degradation and you can help me. Land is the foundation upon which life depends. Let us manage the land sustainably. Love the land you live on. A message from the Sustainable Land Management Project, Ministry of Agriculture, being provided by the Government of Grenada.
Global Environment Facility and the United Nations Development Program. Lotteries Authority, it pays to play Mondays to Saturday. Daily big tree is twice for day. Here is how to play. Select your three digit number. Select your better manually using your number or the system generated quick pick option. In three way mix, six way mix, front here, back here, skip here, and back. Then select your better mom. You can bet any amount of all bet types except for backup, which must be an increment of $10. Select the amount of draws you would like your number to be played for. You can play your number for up to five consecutive draws. So everybody, come on. Sing the chorus with me. I'm going and play Daily Victory. I'm doing my part for my country. Every day Daily Victory. Daily Victory. Head on GBN. Middays at 1.10 p.m. Evenings at 8.20 p.m. Recapping the main points, Agriculture Minister demonstrates his desire to meet with people on the ground. Growing cases of leptospirosis becoming a cause for concern, and police say Kenyan medical student found dead in her apartment. She was found over the weekend. That is DGIS News Hour. I'm Leslie and Johnson Cornwall. On behalf of all those who made it possible, we thank you for viewing. watching the Government Information Service Channels 12 and 22.